What's up, everybody? Brett Okamoto from ESPN, joined today by American Kickboxing Academy head coach Javier Mendez, who uh, who always has big fights going on, but he's got some particularly big ones coming up in the second half of 2020. Hav, thank you for uh, for taking some time, man. How are you over in uh, San Jose? Yeah, we're doing okay. Thanks for having me on, Brett. Yeah, everything's going okay. You know, no one's going great. You know, obviously, but we're we're doing okay. Right. Yeah, you're managing it, right? And uh, yeah. As I mentioned right off the bat, I mean, two big fights. Let's get to the obvious one here. It's coming up next week. Daniel Cormier fighting Stipe Miocic, a trilogy fight at UFC 252, heavyweight championship here in Las Vegas. Um, talk to me about the, the camp. You know, how, how has it been different, obviously, with, with everything that's going on in the world right now? Well, the camp's been kind of, you know, it's kind of good, kind of not good. The good part is that DC doesn't have to go anywhere other than his house to train. He's, uh, he's done a little... Uh, he's turned his garage uh, into a nice little gym there with everything he needs. All the guys that come down, you know, to his house and they train with him and the coaches come down on the days they're needed, you know, and, uh, you know, that part's really good. The, the bad part is that you don't have a whole team behind you and sometimes there's extra people that you can use, you know, so from that perspective, it's not as good. But as far as the, uh, the attention, he's getting extra attention in, in, in some particular sense, you know, just don't have a whole team behind you. And in reality, the whole team, scenario would would actually be more ideal for what he's used to so he hasn't been in the gym at all then he, he hasn't been in that main facility he's just he, in his house he's been here a few times not much he's been mostly mostly over there and uh not many people have been in the gym very few people come to the gym if they have a fight and they don't have anywhere else to train then we'll, we'll, we'll facilitate it here but for the vast majority of the guys um yeah there's nothing there's nothing happening yeah, and this might be a you know a, a moot question to ask, just because it, you know there's there's nothing else you can do about it. There's no there's no fix to it, and Stipe is dealing with the same stuff over in Ohio. But do you feel like you can you can get ready for a five round championship heavyweight trilogy fight in your garage? I mean, is, is it possible to 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 get ready for something like that under those circumstances? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, he he can absolutely get ready, and he is ready. So, and and I believe in my eyes, from what I see and what I remember, he's better prepared for this fight, more motivated than he was the last one. So, so mm -hmm. definitely uh, can happen, and has happened, and will happen. What do you what do you attribute that to? Like, like what what was what went wrong in the, in the in the second fight when you look back? Well, I mean, the game plan. He went off the game plan. Obviously, he he said that we all know that. Uh, yeah. Another thing too, his back was he just had to come off of back surgery. So going right into a full training camp against a great champion like Stipe is no joke. And uh, so that was a little hard on him. This one here, there's no back issues. And he had a little bit more time to train. So on this one here, he's, uh, he's more motivated. And also, too, the fact that you lost to him mm -hmm. and you know why you lost and what, at least why we think we lost, right, is he's motivated to come back and get that loss because he knows it was right there, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, go ahead. Do you think he was, um, I mean, obviously he's more motivated now and he's, he's, it, that, that's obvious, you know, like for the reasons you just said, he lost to a guy, so he wants to get it back. But do you think he was not motivated for the second fight? Because I guess the second fight was sort of a situation where he kind of had to take it because of everything that Stipe had done in the past. It wasn't really, it was, it was one of those deals, you know, where, where like fighters say, like, how, how much better can I beat the guy, you know, after he beat him the first time? What, was, was the motivation sort of a problem in the second one? No, I don't think so. And I don't want to use that as an excuse. I think we were motivated enough. I think it was the back, you know, his back was the issue. Uh, Stipe deserves uh, the attention of any fighter to be motivated. If you're going to fight him, you better be motivated because, you know, you, you know you, you're you not going to do so well. And, and he was motivated. I just think that if anything, maybe a tad bit overconfident, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just a tad bit. And just really when it comes down to honestly, the game plan was, 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 was what the, what, the winning formula for us was following the game plan and he deviated from it. And then uh, I, I believe in my eyes, he got a little tired too. You know, he started getting tired and, and I think that attributed to his back not being a hundred percent. What was the game plan? Basically just step and move, take him down, work just like what he saw the first round. First round was perfect. And look what happened in the first round. It was like, it would look, it looked like we were going to run away with it. <laughs> it looked that's what everything looks like at first sometimes. <laughs> why, why do you think he went away from the game plan in that second fight? 
hard to say why he goes away from from the game plan. DC has, you know, sometimes he, you know, I would I used the Gustafsson fight. He did the same thing with Gustafsson, but the Gustafsson got up at the end of the first round and hit him with that beautiful knee. <laughs> and uh, from that point, we were telling DC go back to the game plan. Blah blah blah. Yeah, he wasn't gonna go back to the game plan. He <laughs> stood with Gustafsson the rest of the four rounds, chasing after him. He yeah. just wanted to get him back for that knee he hit him with. So. Uh -huh. I just look at it that DC is known for that, uh, for doing that to us. He's done it. Will he do it again? Who knows? He might. He might very well do that. You know, it's not like the first or the second time he's done it. He's done it to us before. You know, it just, is. Yeah, it's just, it is what it is. He's a fighter. He finds a way to win, and that's what's most important. Yeah. And even though we may be giving him the right game plan, it doesn't mean that he has to follow it. He just has to win. Hmm. It is funny when I go back and rewatch that second fight. Because you and Bob, you are. Yeah, you're you're angry. And and I mean it's 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 funny watching it because you know the commentators are, are talking about how DC's doing well and he's winning every round, basically. And 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 even as an observer, you know, I'm kind of thinking the same thing. Like he's taking some punches, but I'm scoring the fight for DC. And then he goes back into the corner and you and Bob are just letting him have it, saying that he's not following the game plan. And he and, and you're right, he almost doesn't even really look at you guys or say, Yes, okay, I'll get back on the game plan. He just goes, No, <laughs> he just does it. You know, and, and, and that's great. We're used to them. But when he says, this is the thing about these, he says, okay, I'm focused. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to mm -hmm. happen. You know, and, and he didn't do that. He just, just kind of went along with it. He, you know, and like I said, he's been very successful not listening to us too. So it's kind of like, you should have listened to us. Well, I've been successful without listening to you guys too. So it's kind of like, you know, hit and miss sometimes, right? Yeah. What did you think about the uh, the body shots? Because again, I did I, I, I recently rewatched the fight, and Stipe wasn't throwing any body shots uh, until that fourth round. And then once he landed one, then he threw like fifteen of them in a row. I but, thought when he landed the first one, I said, "Damn it, that was a freaking hell of a good shot." I'm thinking <laughs> we can't take too much of that. Then he hit it again, and I'm like getting worried because he was zeroing in on that body, and I'm like, "Oh man," because you know it's like I tell DC, look. The first shot may not hurt. The second shot may not hurt. The third shot starts to hurt a little bit. The fourth shot hurts a lot more. And then before you know it, you're done. And so yeah. I was worried because he was hitting home runs on that sucker every time. And there's only so much you can take before all of a sudden, boom. And then him being tired didn't help either, you know. So <laughs> the great shots that he got, and hey, you got to give Stipe credit, man. He dug in deep and he went to that body and he had home run and he stuck to that. Had he not stuck to that plan, I don't think he would have won because he, he needed a, a knockout, in my opinion, to, to win that fight. And, and uh, he got it. Mm -hmm. What are you say? He got it. And do you feel like, like he exposed a potential weakness there, the DC, the DC that, that maybe you didn't know about? Because, again, once, once he landed it one time, he kept throwing it, and he kept landing it. I, I yeah. mean, it was very, very effective. It was a, you almost knew it was coming, but DC couldn't block it or get out of the way of it. What, what kind of adjustments should he have made, and, and, and why didn't why don't you think he made an adjustment once he got hit with one? Well, I mean, obviously in the boxing way, what you do is when someone's trying to hit your body like that, you, you got your heavy elbows in and you, you, mm -hmm. you couch kind of down and you crunch on it, you know, and uh, he didn't do any of that. He was stood straight up, and that, that's, uh, that's no way to block those kind of body shots that were coming at him. But we knew about DC's body uh, at times of not being so great from when John Jones kicked him with that left shin kick right up, up the middle. And, and uh, we, we knew that hurt way back then. That was the first fight. Mm -hmm. So we already knew, and he knows, DC knows, uh, you know, the body shots, you know, uh, get a good one and, and, and they will hurt anybody. No matter what kind of conditioning you are, you get a good body shot, you're going to get it. And, mm -hmm. and let's face it, you know, Stipe hit him with a beautiful body shot. So I'm not necessarily thinking DC has a weak body so much as that, man, they got good shots in. Mm -hmm. You get a good body shot in, no matter how great condition you are, that shot's a shot. And it, it, it hit. And yeah. you're gonna you're gonna feel it, and that's what happened. Yeah, and Stipe is a you know he's a smart fighter, he's a world class fighter, he's one of the greatest heavyweights that that uh, this sport has ever seen. But after having so much success with that that particular shot, I mean, how much time or, or energy or discussions have you guys spent on making sure that the that that that's corrected, that the body shot isn't effective for him in this fight? Well, we discussed it. The body shot is not the focal point. The focal point is him being mentally ready and physically ready and not doing what he wants to do, be, be a total MMA fighter. That, mm -hmm. That's the focal point. If we focus too much on the body shot, then we're going to forget about the other great things that Stipe does, and that's be stupid. The body shots mm -hmm. cannot be a focal point because, like I said, they landed perfect. And I don't care what kind of conditioning you do, what kind of this you do. 
you get hit with body shots like that, you're going to get affected. And uh, that's what happens. So it, it, so we can't focus too much on the body shot because it really isn't like he's got a weak body. He's been hit a lot. Yeah. It's just yeah. they were perfect. Yeah. Like I said, John Jones landed a perfect one. Yeah. Stipe landed four or five perfect ones. You know? <laughs> yeah, at least. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know? Um, you know, it, fight week is next week, and it's a little bit of a different fight week feeling, of course, now. Um, you know, no, no fans, the uh, media doesn't have direct access to you guys in a normal week. I think you'd be getting this question a ton and, uh, you know, maybe, um, maybe because of the circumstances you haven't, you haven't been getting it as much. Um, but is this DC's last fight? Is it, is this it? I wanted the last fight to be his last fight. I didn't even want him to fight Stipe. I wanted him just to retire and, re, you know, he was on top of the world as far mm -hmm. as I was concerned. Then, then he wanted to fight and he took the fight and, uh, Dana, you hear Dana's talk. He goes, I know when someone should retire and, and the, he's not, that's not him, you know? Right. So what I think if we're victorious, whoever is victorious from the fight is going to get offered a big money fight. And I believe it's going to be against John Jones because John Jones has stressed he wants to go to heavyweight and what better way for Jones to get the kind of money he wants than to yeah. fight a, a, a Stipe or a DC for the heavyweight title. I mean, that, that would make, the fight that Jones would want, obviously. I mean, he deserves more money. He's a major star, and he's, you know, he's the most decorated guy, really, in, in, in the light heavyweight division. He's never been beat, you know? He, you know, so I think that it's a logical choice, you know? I think, you know, and of course, I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know if I'm right. But also, too, just to mention the thing we, we talked about earlier with the DC thing, if, in fact, DC had a weak body, the first shot that was a beautiful shot would have dropped him. Mm. So it didn't. Mm. So obviously, DC's got a strong body. Because mm. if you really think about it, you hit with a good shot like that, if you don't have a strong body, you ain't taking that shot. You're not. Yeah. You're not. And he yeah. took more than one before he got him. So I'm just saying anybody in the world, regardless how strong you are, can get hit to the body repeatedly like Stipe drilled that sucker. And I dare you to last. I don't mm. think so. I've never seen, in all the years I've been involved, you get drilled like that, you're going to get affected. And to me, that's what happens. So oh, you can for definitely sure. take a shot. You can definitely take a shot. You just can't take too – nobody can take too many of those kind of shots. Yeah, and, and what, I, I, what, I, what, I, what I was referring to, like not necessarily a weak body, but maybe a weak uh, – like technical link, you know, or, yeah, or, yeah, 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 or yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe he's got a great body. And so, and so what you were saying earlier is that he, uh, he just thought he could absorb them and he just, he wasn't bothered by the first few and, and then they added up on him. That, that, that 100% could have been the mentality. I go, yeah, I could hundred percent be it. I don't know. We didn't discuss, you know, why, why'd you let him hit you to the body? We just, yeah. Hey, they got in, yeah. you know, they just got in. It isn't why it's a matter you got in. But our biggest, uh, Bob and our, our biggest concern is, you should have stuck to what we wanted you to do. Because when we, you know, like what I tell the guys all the time, listen to my plan and Bob's plan. If it's working, don't deviate. Stay yeah. on the plan. If it's you're, not you're, working, go <laughs> do whatever you want. And your guys, seem, you want. your guys seem to like to deviate. You know, Habib thinks yeah. he's Muhammad Ali all of a yeah. sudden. You know, you the Dean Velasquez fight when, yeah. Uh, yeah. When, he, when he was standing at a kickboxing range with Junior Dos yeah. Santos. Uh, yeah. Your guys don't like to listen to you sometimes, huh? Sometimes they don't, you know, and then sometimes they do, you know. So I, I take it when I can get it, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, hey, do I have Habib's ear? Do I have Daniel's ear? I don't know. Sometimes. You <laughs> hope. You yeah, hope. I hope. I hope. <laughs> you know, and, and normally, you know, Bob and I are pretty correct with DC and how he should fight. Yeah. I don't really think we've been wrong hardly ever at all. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always pretty much right how he should fight, you know, mm -hmm. whether he does it or not. Again, like you said, our guys deviate. They do. Yeah. They definitely do. Well, I mean, you said something interesting there. So so when I asked you if this is the last one and, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to to agree with you. You know, John has been wanting to move up and he has been wanting more money. And I think that uh, perhaps. He's not asking for the wrong things. It's just the timing was was wrong. You know, when he was asking for for a big you know increase to fight Francis Ngannou, I don't know if that conversation goes the same as it does once this fight is over and then they're looking at potentially putting him in a title fight. You know, then I think the the, the UFC would, would probably be more willing to meet him at the negotiating table for something like that. So, if DC wins and that's right there, the trilogy fight with John Jones for a lot of money, you think he sticks around for it? Yeah, you do. <laughs> I think I think Uncle Dana's gonna throw so much money at DC. DC's can't pass it up. DC loves money. 
Yeah. So I, I think that, that that's going to happen. And I, I, and I think, well, think about this, George Masvidal, they wouldn't give him nothing that he wanted till till the right money fight. You got to see the UFC is a great business. They know what they're doing. And hey, the numbers got to make sense for them. If they're going to make good money, they want to make sure they'll give you money, but they got to make sure they make money, but they're not going to share with you you know, and then Gano Jones fight is a great fight, but but it's not the big money maker that a DC or or Miocic fight with him would be. So I think that uh, I think what's going to happen, in my opinion, is hopefully we are the winners. Mm-hmm. But the winner of this fight is is going to get Jones. I believe. I believe that. I believe yeah. because Jones showed interest. If Jones didn't show any interest in that, that's different. But I think the fact that he's shown interest and he says he ain't fighting until, right? Is that what he's saying? He, he's not fighting until he gets what he wants? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, why would you want a major star like that sitting on the sidelines when you've got two viable, great heavyweights that he could potentially fight for that huge payday? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think the reason that they're not talking to John Jones is because they don't really need to right now. But depending on what happens on uh, on the 15th, that, that conversation completely changes with the idea of him going up to heavyweight. So let me ask you this then, if, if, if DC wins this fight, is he going to do the whole retirement that night and then come back for a John Jones fight potentially? Or is he, is he going to leave the door open? What, what, give, give us a preview of what, what happened. I there. have no idea. He has not stated nothing about retiring. He just, he, all he wants is he wants that, that L back. He wants to make that L into a W. That's his main focus. I, I don't think he's thinking past that, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, he has talked about retirement, but but I think deep down inside, he's going to wait and see. More likely, I want him to retire. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. I want him to retire regardless, but I just know how the, the, the system works and I know what makes sense. And and Dana, if Dana said something to the effect, we'll see, what uh, then it's up in the air. But when Dana says, I know who should retire and that guy shouldn't retire, I know he's thinking he wants to make something happen. I know mm-hmm. if he's victorious. And if Miocic's victorious, I know he's going to turn that on him. It, that's the right move, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. What, how would you feel? And, and you know, we don't got to get too much into this because it's, it's speculative and it's down the road. It's in the future. But how would you feel about fighting John a third, third time? Is that something that you want? You as his coach, is that something you want? No. No, it's something DC would want because that's, that would mean that that was the only man that's ever beat him. Mm-hmm. And, and DC would want that. And, and the thing of it is, is it's that heavyweight too. So it's kind of one of those, they'll switch, they'll switch positions. At light heavyweight, Jones had the edge. Mm-hmm. At heavyweight, I think DC's got the slight edge, you know, because he's best at heavyweight. DC has fought his best fights at heavyweight, not light heavyweight. Yeah. Hmm. You know, that, that's something that I've been saying about this fight is I think that, that uh, what's so great about this fight is that not only is it, you know, tied 1-1 and there's a championship on the line and everything else, but I, I think that this fight is for the right to, for the winner is going to be able to say he was the greatest heavyweight of his era. You know, I think if Stipe wins, you know, he's, 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 won, he's defended that title three times in a row before he lost it to DC. He regained it back. If he wins, he's the greatest heavyweight of his era. Same thing for DC. If he comes back and, and beats Stipe for the second time, I would say him. But you have a different perspective on that because you were Cain Velasquez as his coach as well and I would consider him in this era are you looking at this fight as the winner is the greatest heavyweight of of this generation or is that still Kane in your opinion no I look at this one as the best in in of all time Kane Mm. Kane should have that title but the injuries I'm sorry the injuries got him too much and Mm. and uh, uh, Kane was the greatest heavyweight ability (laughs) of all time he just I mean, injuries screwed him. Wasn't able to realize it. No, because- wasn't able to realize the, what he could have been. Now, he's one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, for damn sure. But mm-hmm. the greatest, you can't, I can't honestly say that because, you know, you know, because it didn't materialize that, you know. Yeah. A lot of bad things happened to him, you know, and yeah. that's why. So that's why this one is, to me, the greatest uh, for that reason. Yeah. And then speaking of Kane, uh, DC posted a pretty great photo of himself, Kane, and Luke. Have you got have have you been over there and have you seen those three working together and and that's that's got to be pretty special, huh? Uh, no, I wasn't there that that particular time because he like I said he mostly trains out of his house and, and mm-hmm. I was here with some other the guys uh, that needed fights. Uh, no, it was great. The only one that was missing is Habib, you know, for the four. I mean, you think about four guys all together at one time training and and these guys all achieve greatness. You know, uh, it, it's pretty 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 cool. Yeah. Yeah. You think, well, is it Kane happily retired? Never going to see him again? 
I would say not. I think the the wrestling is his gig, and I and I think he's he's got a great future there. And uh, he has not stressed uh, uh, the itch to want to get back and fight and hit people, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so I think I think yeah, I think I think he's he's going to be a WWE type wrestler. Uh, and that's going to be his future, or maybe entertainment, you know, maybe. Mm-hmm something comes up where he's in um, a television reality shows or not reality shows, but you know, something of that nature, television. Yeah. Yeah. When you mentioned Habib and obviously I need to ask you about him. Um, but one last question about DC. One thing that I love talking to you, talk, one reason I love talking to you before fights, Hav, is you're always so honest with me in terms of how confident you are. You, you've told me before fights that you're, you're supremely confident that you know your guy's going to win. And then you've actually told me before fights, I'm nervous about this one. I, I'm nervous. It's, it's a dangerous fight. It's a dangerous opponent. Um, the camp wasn't as great or this or that. You, you always give me a pretty upfront, honest answer. So how confident are you going into this last fight against Stipe? Um, I'm more confident this fight than I was the second fight. Yeah. Uh, but I also realize that, that Stipe, now that he's a champ again, he's going to come out stronger. So – so I give us the slight edge. I don't give us a huge edge. I give us a slight edge. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I'm more confident than I was the first fight. So if I had to say, do I feel we're going to win? I go, yeah. If I had to say, are we going to knock him out? I, I never say knockout. I always go five-round war. So, so mm-hmm. that's what I feel. I feel we'll win a five-round decision. And I feel more comfortable with this one than I did the last one. Okay. Um, we'll get into Habib. You know, obviously he, he and his family went through a, a tragedy. It, um, it's now been a little over a month, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, w- what have your conversations, uh, how many, how much have you spoken to him over the last month? And what have those conversations been like? Uh, well, it's something that people don't realize that uh, from the very beginning, since 2012, when Habib come to training camp is when I talk to him, when he's gone, I never talk to him until he comes <laughs> back. Yeah. It wasn't until just recently that I that I get to talk to him here and there. And it's I never used to contact him. And it isn't until just recently that I've been talking to him a little bit. So I haven't talked to him very much at all. I did get to speak to him for the first time about uh, two weeks ago. And this is the first time I got to talk to him. And he he's still going through missing his father, which rightfully so. Mm-hmm. The way they were connected to each other, how his father – his father was – pretty much his, his, his everything to him, you know, yeah. you know, having his father's blessing gave him that, that, that power to go out and do what he needed to do. Cause he's been with training with his father since he's a child, you know, so everything mm-hmm. that his father uh, wants him to do, it has wanted him to do. Habib goes out and accomplishes him, you know, and knowing full well that I go do something, my father's going to be proud of me. And so he goes out with that, but now he doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, he's, got to focus on on the legacy that his father wanted for him you know and 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 live through that you know do something great for the legacy of your father and mm-hmm. um yeah so that's that's what i think is going on and, and uh, i think that that's what's going to make him better for this fight hopefully that's what i'm hoping that that he'll use this and become better because he's not going to have his father there mm-hmm. were you surprised at all that he accepted a fight on october 24th no, I wasn't surprised. I, I thought that he would come back. I didn't know when. I, I was uh, – because he's training all the time, right? Yeah. Because if, you, if you've been watching, he's been training. So it's just, a ment- yeah. it's just a mental thing. It's a mental thing. And I think that he wants to get on board. He wants to focus. Instead of grieving, he probably wants to focus on something good. And mm-hmm. that's what I would do. I would tell him, hey, man, do it, do it for the legacy. Get out there and, and, and do what you got to do, you know, mm-hmm. to make sure that your father's legacy lives on. And if I'm not mistaken, he's brought a lot of the uh, important people in, in Dagestan to come in to, to ask how to improve on certain things that his father was always doing. So I think he's taken up a lot of the chores his father did to fulfill a lot of his father's uh, 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 dreams for Dagestan. You know, I believe he is. Well, what could you tell us about, about his father? I, I mean, you went out there, right? And, and uh... Just what, what comes to mind? I think we're all sort of aware of who he is and, and we, we know about him and we know the influence that he had on Habib, but is there any kind of direct personal insight that you can, you can give us to, to let us know a little bit more about him? Well, the man was very disciplinary. He, he, if he tells you to be here at this time, you better be there at that time. And if you were not there in time, he's there scolding you. He's talking to you 15, 20 minutes. He's chewing out some of these kids that you know, and he's telling them, you know, I don't know what he's telling them because he's speaking Russian, but he's scolding them. He's not, he's not happy with them because they're out there playing too much video games or they're not on practice on time or they're not giving enough effort. 
he gets them on the side. Every one of those guys, he gets them on the side and he's telling them what it's going to require for you. You're a professional, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what he's saying, I don't know, but I know it has a huge impact on them because they come out better every single time. Mm-hmm. And, and he knows his fighters so well because they're like his kids. He's mm-hmm. had these guys since they were little, you know, little six-year-olds or, or, or little younger, you know, and he's been training them and he's been putting time with them. So, you know, dad gives them a little slap here and there when they're out of line. I'll give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about. When I was there the last time we were in Dubai and we were out uh, jet skiing, all of us, Habib, we're all jet skiing. His father didn't do it. He was just waiting. So we're all jet skiing. And all of a sudden, his father's motion for all of us to come in. And I'm like, well, everybody's having fun. Why is he? Well, one of the fighters was being a little reckless. And he, didn't, he wasn't having none of that because if one of them got injured, that's career. And so he chewed him out. Well, even though all of us came back in. We all sat down, whatever. We weren't involved, we weren't involved in any of that. But that person, they went out of line. Oh, he was chewing him out. <laughs> he said, la, 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 you know. And I go, what's going on? He goes, oh, he's, he's upset at him because he was reckless. He did a, something that was dangerous. And, and so I go, oh, so that's why we have to come in. Yes, because uh-huh. we're a team. We're a team. So we all come together. It's not one. All of us, you know, mm-hmm. so one gets in trouble, everybody gets in trouble. That's so he, he, he's a great coach. Another thing that people don't know about him, he's such a great man. We're at the airport getting ready to go, and he feels like he wants to wrestle. And he's like, I want to wrestle. So he, he has one of the guys in there, and they're tussling in the middle of the airport. And I'm like, look, and I go, wow. I go, this guy, he just loved the martial arts and yeah. loved just the kids. He loved the kids. I mean, you could feel this energy and he was such a passionate man mm-hmm. for everybody that I ever seen him encounter. He never mistreated anybody, man. This was a beautiful man. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that the legacy that he, he wanted Habib to leave and that that will end up motivating Habib. Habib is kind of, um, I mean, I, I think his father said this, you know, in, in interviews before he passed and, and Habib is now, you know, kind of carried it over by saying Justin in, October and then GSP in April. I mean, are, are you aware or, or like the, the conversations that you have had with him and his father? Was it was that always the plan? Thirty and zero GSP at the end. Is that is that what we should expect? It was it was discussed on numerous occasions that <laughs> that uh, thirty and zero and leave a legacy. But GSP was definitely 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 the legacy fight. So mm. I, if they can complete that and he's successful, then then I can see thirty and zero and he's done. Yes, I can see that. I could definitely see that because that was a conversation that was that was uh, you know numerous uh, uh, times have been brought up while I was with them. Mm. So yes, I could see that happening. What do you think of that fight? I think that's that's a great fight. I think it's the greatest uh, potential uh, fight of all time. Potential. I, I think mm. the the one they may trump that is maybe maybe Connor Habib too. That mm. could very well be the biggest fight of all time because. You know, Connor's got something to prove, and Connor will come out of retirement just for that fight alone. But I don't know if Habib would ever want to fight Connor. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the issue because I don't know if that fight puts him in the legacy uh, talk. You know, I, I think that that would be the problem for Habib. There's no legacy fight, it's a money fight. And Habib's never been about the money solely, he's been about legacy more than anything. He's, he's not a greedy man, he never has been. And that's not going to motivate him, you know, as the legacy fight will. So, uh, GSP, 100%. Mm-hmm. Big time motivation. Uh, anybody else? I, I don't really know. You know, maybe Tony. You know, if Tony gets a good win mm-hmm. and G- and GSP is not available, I think Tony would be more enticing to Habib than Connor, only because with Tony it would be more of a legacy fight. I think. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, Hav, how do you feel about not fighting Tony? I mean, it's a fight. It's a fight that we waited five years to see. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and now it's Justin and not and not Tony. How do you feel about it? Uh, well, due to the fact that every time we're supposed to fight Tony, look what happens, you know, mm-hmm. this time around the pandemic, not that Tony created that, but I'm just saying, you know, it's like five times, five misses. Yep. So, and I am kind of a little superstitious. So do I want to see a six fight with Tony? Not really, yeah. not really, but Hey, if Tony gets a win and the UFC, uh, puts Tony against Habib next, if we're successful with Justin, then yeah, I mean, you got to fight him. The UFC is that's who your next opponent is, then you have to fight him. And and Tony Tony would have deserved that, you know. And and so that's how I feel about that, you know. And nothing against Tony. I mean, I think personally that Tony screwed up on his last fight by overtraining, by by cutting the weight, and he shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Because you know, in in this game, 
you know, it's a matter of inches, man. And you cannot go out there and, and do that to prove a point like what he did to make the mm -hmm. weight, which is a true warrior. He's a true warrior, no doubt. Yeah. But from the winning and losing perspective, that might not have been the wisest move, in my opinion. Yeah. Now I'll put you on the spot here. Which of these stylistically is the toughest matchup for Habib? Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, Tony Ferguson, Justin Gaethje. Which is the toughest <laughs> fight? <laughs> it's the guy he already beat, Connor, hands down. It was Connor. Connor, hands down. Connor, <laughs> hands down. Hands down, Connor, for me. Why, why is that? Because look at the fight with Connor. He took him down the first round. How much damage did Connor sustain in that first round? Mm -hmm. How much control did Habib have in the first round with, with Connor? How much? Very, very little, especially compared to what we're used to seeing when Khabib gets. You got him. it. Where have you seen the opposite of that? Never. Mm -hmm. He's had better control. Connor stand up is great. It's great stand up. Habib stand up is is very underrated, and people need to wake up. He, the man can strike. Mm -hmm. I don't care what people say. Oh, he can strike. Oh, that's your chance. You go and strike with him. Go ahead. If Habib didn't have any grappling, go ahead and strike with him. See yeah. see what happens to you. Yeah. See see if you you think he can hit you. He can't knock you out. Go ahead. But the fact that he's such a great grappler, I as his coach and his father. We, why would we advise him to go stand up with someone, give someone a chance when you're superior on the ground? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way. We're going to go on the ground all the time. So, so yeah, for me, hands down, it, it's, it's Conor McGregor. It's the toughest challenge he's ever had. Uh, we'll see what Justin brings to the table, but, but I, still say, I still say Conor, just based oh. on what we went through. Okay. Well, break some news for us. Uh, the fight's October 24th. Where's it going to be? Well, we got two choices, right? We got Las Vegas or we got Fight Island, right? Yeah. I mean, guys can figure out that one. Not I'm thinking, you know, and I could be wrong, but I'm thinking where, where, where'd they make Fight Island for? Yeah. You know? But they haven't said it. So until they say it, yeah. you know, for all I know, you know, I know this. I know, I know I'm, I, uh, COVID is too high in California. Habib's not comfortable coming here to train. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to probably go to Dagestan uh, to train him and then we'll go from there. So after DC's fight, I'll know more. Mm -hmm. But for right now, I don't know uh, where the fight's going to be 100%. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I know this. Uh, I'm going to him. That mm -hmm. I do know. That, that is 100% a fact. I'm going to train him in Dagestan or wherever he chooses to go. But I'm not, we're not training in, 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 uh, in mm -hmm. San Jose. So for those that – I mean, he's got tons of fans coming there all the time. And I feel bad for a lot of these fans that make the trip to come down here. And all of a sudden, they're like, Habib's not here. It's like no. I, I spent my whole year's savings or whatever, and I feel bad for these guys. So mm -hmm. for those that do listen to your podcast, he mm -hmm. won't be training in San Jose, so please don't don't waste your money here because mm -hmm. I hate for, the, for them to do that. It, it, it makes me sad, you know, because they come in to see him. They admire him so much, and just to get a glimpse of him or whatever, you know, and, and they come here and, and he's not here, you know. Yeah. So, so for those that are – thinking of coming here, please don't. He will mm -hmm. not be here. I don't know where it's going to be. It's going to be Dagestan or somewhere else. I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, it be in Dagestan or, or, or wherever he chooses to hold it, but when will you go? Will you go the week right after D DC's fight? Uh, I told him, uh, whenever you need me after DC's fight, I'm available. He goes, okay, coach, I will let you know. So he hasn't let me know yet. <laughs> so when, when that happens, it's going to happen soon. I'll know after, after the DC's fight when I'm going okay. and where I'm going. Cool. Well, you've been, uh, you've been very, very generous with your time, Hav. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll let you get going. We'll see you in Vegas next week. All right. We'll see you and then uh, when you go out to Dagestan or wherever, we'll, we'll, have you, we'll throw you back on Zoom and, and see how the camp's going. All right. We'll do. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right. See you next week. Take care. All right. Bye. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.